Welcome to Voices from the Bench, a dental laboratory podcast. Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com or look for us on Facebook at Voices from the Bench. Greetings and welcome to episode 159 of Voices from the Bench. My name is Elvis. And my name is Barbara, which we've said 159 times, I do believe. Well, do you want to change your name? We can go with any name you want. <laughs> no, I don't want to change my we name. We can mix it up. I'll be Barbara if you want to be Elvis. <laughs> no, that's okay. I don't blame you. I wouldn't want to be Elvis either. And you sound the same every single time you say it. And I try to mix it up a little bit, but you sound super fantastically just awesome. So <laughs> I've had 159 weeks of practice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, congratulations on that, by the way. Yeah, finally got something right. Yep, we're still going. <laughs> So what's up? This last weekend was Visions 21, and we're actually recording it before Visions. So we're hoping that there's a ton of great photos online that made me feel bad for not going. Stupid pandemic. Ditto. Ditto. Yeah. But I'm hoping everybody had a great time in Nashville. Hopefully a good turnout. Hopefully the speakers were amazing. And hopefully the country understands we can still have meetings. meetings. Yes. But the next big meeting is actually the Florida Dental Lab Association down there near your home state, Barb. Yes. And it's what, June 11th and 12th? Yep, June 11th and 12th. And I think they're still having it in the same place in Orlando, across from SeaWorld. I hope you can get there. You coming? I hope so. Dude, you got your shot. I got my shot. My wife's got the shot. The oldest son is scheduled for a shot. There you go. I'm thinking it's time. Time to travel. Yeah, but the Florida Dental Association Symposium is looking really good. I mean, it's packed with a ton of past podcast guests. Mm -hmm. Sean Nowak, Alex and Danielle Wunches, Chris Bormis, Marlon Gone, Daniel Alter, Jimmy Stiegel, and Gary Morgan. I mean, just a ton of people who we've had on the podcast before. Yay! So head over to fdla.org to register for what is an awesome meeting. So when we started the podcast, one of the goals was to always do roundtable episodes. These are conversations with different people in our industry covering different topics. We did a bunch of them in the early days, but man, are they hard to put together. Mm -hmm. I mean, everybody in our industry is busy, like all the time. And to get four or five people together at the same time and all hooked up to record, it's difficult. Yep. But we missed it, so we made it happen. And I tell you, it's a good one. We have three technicians from different labs talking about ExoCAD versus 3Shape. Dun, dun, dun. These two design programs are the two favorites with most labs, and this is a chance to learn about the one that you might not use. So first up, joining us again is Savan Pelorian from Pacific Dental Lab, who's an expert on 3Shape. Then we have Matt Mills from Hybrid Technologies, who is on Team ExoCAD. And then we have Inja from Winter Springs Dental Lab, which is a lab that uses Zircon Zon, which of course is an ExoCAD, but she also uses 3Shape and InLab. She rounds off the group very well. And she has a really difficult last name, so. <laughs> it's a great, fun, opinionated conversation all about dental design softwares. So join us as we chat with Savan, Matt, and Inja. Hey, Barb. I called Oradent the other day about their P5 milling machine. Super. How did it go? I was introduced to the consumables Oradent offers, such as Delta Zirconia, Oradent ZR, Oradent Cutting Tools, and Quest PMMA. How convenient. You know what? You can buy the mill and the materials from them. Yeah, if you think that's convenient, you can also buy furnaces by Neighbortherm, and vacuums by Renfert. Plus, I don't have to talk to a different person every time I call. I have a rep dedicated just for me. I have heard that their service is amazing. Absolutely. Oradent offers high-quality cutting tools made here in the USA, and they have great options for zirconia. Delta Zirconia, which is a super cost savings for labs, and Oradent ZR, made proudly here in the U.S. of A. Do they still offer dental alloys? You know, Oradent started off manufacturing alloys and will always provide high-quality alloys for dental labs. 
one of the few companies in the U.S. to still manufacture their own alloys. Is there anything that they don't supply dental labs? Actually, they also offer dental scanners and a 3D printer from Shining 3D. Hold up. Does that scanner have its own design software? Actually, Oradent offers ExoCAD for your designing needs. Nice. I'm not the best with technology and setting up all of this equipment, just saying. Well, we know, but that's <laughs> fine. Oradent has a technical support team who can help with installing or troubleshooting any problems. Wow, Oradent definitely is a one-stop shop for any dental lab's needs. How do we get in touch with them? You can always call our friends at Oradent at 1-800-422-7373. Or you can visit them at their website at oradent.com. We super appreciate your support of the podcast, Oradent. Thank you so much. King Arthur had his knights. Captain America has his Avengers. And dentists have their laboratories. These unique individuals have gathered together to entertain and enlighten all who dare to sit down at the round table and listen to the voices from the bench. We're excited to have on the podcast today a group of dental technicians that all kind of specialize in digital dental design with either 3Shape or ExoCAD. So we welcome to the podcast again, Savan Pelorian. How are you, sir? Good, my friend. How are you? Doing well. We talked live in person at the Whitmix Digital Forum in October of 2019. You spoke on stage about 3Shape and kind of blew the room away, if I remember correctly, <laughs> with some really cool tips and tricks. I mean, everyone was talking about what you were able to offer that group. So I'm excited to have you back on kind of representing the 3Shape. Thank you. And then we have Matt Mills. How are you, sir? I'm doing well. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, Matt, you're out of Orlando, right, with Hybrid Technologies? That's correct, yep. Close to me. There you go, another Floridian. <laughs> yep. And then joining us is Inja Dorg. How are you? Good, good. How are you? Doing well. So, what we're going to do is just have a conversation about the differences, the pros and cons of ExoCAD and 3Shape. But first, I kind of want to hear about how you got into the industry and how you chose the software that you're using. So let's start with you, Matt. How did you get into dental technology? So I was, I guess, right out of high school and I had a friend working at a milling center actually in Denver, Colorado, where I grew up. And it was custom milling center. I was gonna say, yeah, CMC. Yeah, they're not around anymore. They just sold <laughs> recently, but I started there. I got some great experience. There's a couple people there that are just titans in the digital realm, I guess. And so got some really good experience with them. Then I jumped over to Long Island, New York and worked with Jerem Dental Group up there. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So Alan Jerem, you know, he's very involved with 3Shape. I was actually using 3Shape at CMC. They didn't have any ExoCAD. They actually brought ExoCAD in because there was a new scanner somebody wanted them to buy. And, you know, they had asked everybody there, like, you know, is this something that you guys want to use in, in the design department? And everybody kind of turned their nose up at it. And it was always three shape is the best, three shape is the best. And, and it really was for, in my opinion, for a long time. Well, CMC sold three shape, didn't they? Uh, no, no. I, I know they were heavily involved with them huh. being owned by Zahn and, and Henry Schein. I'm sure all kinds of handshakes that go along with that. But sure. <laughs> so from New York, I went down to Florida and worked at uh, a lab there. They were kind of specializing more in high-end, uh, more cosmetic aesthetic stuff. And one day the owner of the lab came through the design department and said he was tired of the renewal fees with three shape. And if we didn't know ExoCAD in six months, we weren't going to have a job. Wow. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty intense. Trial by fire. Yeah. I was kind there of thrown into, and I was a supervisor of the, the CAD cam department at the time. And so it was you know, it was a lot of weight on my shoulders, a lot of training, a lot of extra time learning the software, but really glad that I did fast forward a few years to owning my own lab now. And we're strictly ExoCAD. We're, you know, specializing in full mouth aesthetic restorative type cases, hybrid cases, you know, all on four, all on X style cases. But I really never looked back on 3Shape, quite honestly. In my opinion, they do have one module that 
is that I think takes the cake out of, uh, you know, compared the three shape to the ExoCAD module. Yeah. And that is the custom abutment module. I think that they killed it. Three shape killed it to this day. They have the best custom abutment module, but for my personal experience and for what I do at my lab, we're strictly ExoCAD. Interesting. Wow. So nice. Enja, how about? Dental technology was just a college job for me when I got into the industry. Maybe about 15 years ago, I was going to school actually for accounting. Boo, that sounds boring. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) I did my MBA at UCF. So by the time I finished with all of my schooling, I've been, you know, working at the same lab for 10 years. So when it actually came the choice to actually, you know, pursue my schooling and go into accounting versus stay in the laboratory industry, the job kind of chose me, I guess. (laughs) (laughs) So I stayed in the lab business. I'm a general manager at uh, Sacker Dental Arts. We're actually also in Orlando in Winter Park. Oh, wow. We utilize all the systems. We're one of those kind of yes labs. You know, our service is above all most important. So if, you know, if a doctor says, I have this, do you? We say yes. Even if we don't, we say yes. We go, we figure it out. Um, and we add the system, so we have... Always say yes. Yeah, we have uh, uh, Zircanzan, we have ExoCAD, we have 3Shape, we have Serona, but Zircanzan is the system that we started with. It is a ExoCAD derivative, but what Zircanzan does, it offers complete systems. So it has the software, it has the mill, it has the scanner, the support, everything. And 10, 12 years ago, as I think we bought our first Zircanzan system, And those machines are still milling for us. They're workhorses. They work really great, great precision. And it also like ease of use too. Their local office is in Atlanta, but, you know, if Mm. anything breaks down, they pretty much just ships the part and, you know, with the instructions and our technicians take it apart and put it together and, you know, fix their own machine, you know, Mm. unlike some of the other systems. So it's been working out really, really great for us. It does make productivity and workflow pretty easy if your design system and your mills and everybody is the exact same company. (laughs) It does. Agree. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) The big if. Yeah. Well, yeah. (laughs) To double way uh, street. Yeah. <laughs> so, Savon, what about you? How did you end up in this crazy world? Well, we remember we. It's all in my interview from sure. October, but just a quick roundup. Episode available at all times. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Since I got out of high school, I've been working with my hands, uh, car stereos, custom box, you know, enclosures, and all the big stuff there. And then after I left there, I went to customizing cars, turbochargers, and souping them up. And then somehow my uncle found this guy because my uh, cousins were going to school with his sons and it ends up being my future boss wow. where uh, I just go in and I, you know, gave a five minute tour of the place. And he said, what do you think? I said, looks fun. Yeah. <laughs> so that was 2001, November, you know, ever since then model room was for me for about five years. And then about three years into model room, I started uh, repairing stuff since I was good with my hands. He saw a place for me to repair ovens, you know, thermocouples, muffles, and stuff like that. So I started doing that and ordering product. And then uh, we had the 2D Mm -hmm. Prisera 4K. So I was overseeing the guy do that. And I became really good friends with this guy, gentleman named Mike. Little did I know I was going to be his replacement. So he was with the company for 11 years prior to me. And then next thing you know, one day he's like, I'm going to fire Mike and you're going to do his job. That was a stab in the heart for me because I was my good friends. You know, with 2D macro, it was fun doing all the 2D CAD. And then uh, 3D came along. Prisera, I think, was our first 3D system we got. And then shortly after that, we got Serac. And fast forward to 2012, I left the lab because uh, the economy went down and I was working 12 hours getting paid for, you know, eight hours or not even like six hours. And it was a hard call, but I think it was the best call because my friend found me a place in uh, Burbank, California, not Burbank down a lab, but I went to this small lab, Mm -hmm. uh, high volume. And basically he said, we do three shape. I said, okay, I'm a fast learner. So next thing I know, I'm just almost got thrown under the bus with the amount of work they had. And I was just self-taught 
how to do started off with simple copings then anatomical and then abutments and bridges and he he was asking me we got to learn how to do this and i would go on to the online forum i think it was dental lab networks at the time and that's what i was doing i was i was asking questions and teaching myself and 2013 i got an offer to come back to the lab with a promise um that it'll never be what it was. And since then, we've accelerated. I came on board and they already had a three-shaped scanner in the system. So I already knew it. And from there, I didn't even know I would be where I'm at with three-shape, you know, back in 2013 as one of their KOLs and moderating the online study group and everybody on Facebook knowing who I was, or if I go to the shows, they ran and people would just say, hey, how's it going? Thank you for all your help. To where I am right now, I never would imagine I would be here 2012, 2013, around that area. I guess uh, my uh, gift of gab online to help people <laughs> kind of caught Three Shape's attention. Yeah, we're just a strictly Three Shape. I've had from previous CAD experience, it's helped. But like Matt said, there are flaws. It's a love-hate relationship for sure. <laughs> and I've said that to Three Shape many times, and they're okay with it. I guess uh, it just comes down to the lab and, you know, we make it work for us. The fees are not really an issue. We only have three licenses. They are, I do agree, it's about 5500 a yeah. year right now yeah. for us to renew. But, you know, when you're talking, you make millions of dollars a year, $5,500 is like in the bigger schemes. If you're looking at a, it not really affecting, it's almost, you know, like 10, 15 bucks yeah. to, you know, make $5,000 a year. Yeah. If you drop the numbers down, the ratio to what we make a year off the software, you know, it kind of levels out. But I can understand if you have like 30 workstations. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It, it does. And that's when you're on the phone. Hey, what can you do for us? But yes, ExoCAD does have a better price plan. But as far as the fees go, there still are fees when you want to upgrade, if you think about it. But an ExoCAD is great. I definitely will give ExoCAD credit for their implant-supported bridges with Gingiva. The freedom to do the Thimble, BDT, Toronto, whatever the proper term is, yeah, style bridges, so much easier than in 3Shape. But, you know, now we have attachments and stuff that make it just as easy. Mm-hmm. It's a give take. I mean, one's one's up one year, the other one's down. Next thing you know, it's their neck and neck, and then it counterbalances itself to go into the future with all the different versions. It's Microsoft and Apple. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Absolutely, exactly. Yeah. A lot of people will complain about the pricing, and then a lot of people will say, "Hey, you got to look at it at a business standpoint." And price, kind of, not to say that it doesn't matter, but it's just uh, here nor there with any system or any product. Yeah, but yeah, that's my story and how I got sucked into this uh, <laughs> wonderful world of uh, dentistry as we see it today. Yeah, that's what I meant. Wonderful, yeah. not crazy. Wonderful. That's what I meant. <laughs> but that's interesting you bring up the fees. Here at our lab, we only have three shape and we have six seats. So yeah. double your price. That's our yearly price. Barb, you're mostly three shape, right? Oh yeah, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking we've got, geez, probably nine or 10 licenses. So yeah, it's significant. But like he said, and I agree, you know, when you're doing the type of volume that we're doing in our laboratory, it definitely does work itself out. If you look at the you know, long run all year long, $10, $15, I would agree with you on that. So how does ExoCAD or Zircon Zon, how do they update your systems without the yearly fee? Do they? It's an optional update. So for example, this year they came out with ExoCAD Galway. Okay. And anybody who was running the previous years release they don't have to upgrade and then you know they own their software it's theirs they own the dongle if you know there's no bills they have to pay yearly and you know it's not like a subscription is going to keep their dental lab alive they own that software Mm -hmm. and you pay for it once you own it and and that's it if you want to upgrade you pay the yearly fee and what is that if i can ask i think it's it's a few thousand dollars okay I think I just upgraded one of my stations. It was a few thousand bucks. They have flex licenses now. It's gotten more friendly for sure, but it's always been a little bit cheaper than 3Shape. And honestly, it's I bring it up just because I had worked at big labs where it was a serious issue. You know, I mean, that's sure. it could be $150,000 and it might sound like a drop in the yeah. bucket, but... <laughs> 
when that renewal fee comes around, when you're also expected to stroke a check for taxes, you know, yeah, it can painful. be a serious expense. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I look at ExoCAD as a tool. I don't look at it as an expense. As a lab that that does the full arch cases like that, it's it's really, in my opinion, it's it's uncomparable for the full arch stuff, like like Savan said. Yeah, I was gonna say, Savan mentioned that. Do you agree that it's superior when doing the full arch with the gingiva and everything? I do, I do. You know, I don't want to take anything away from Three Shape. I think that they have their strengths. Like I said, their custom abutment module. Pretty nice. <laughs> Yeah, it's really, really nice. What makes it better? Just the the design features, I guess you will, or the design handles. You know, the way you can drag a margin, for example, or shape a margin is a little bit different, or shape an emergence profile is a little bit different. And a lot of people will say, for example, ExoCAD is three-shape expert mode. Some people say that because there's more options. There's expert mode in ExoCAD. And at the end of the day, it will require more clicks to get to the end of your design in ExoCAD versus 3Shape. So it's a little more streamlined in 3Shape and that carries over into their custom abutment module. And it's just, it really is flawless coming from an ExoCAD user. But yeah. ExoCAD as a whole, in my opinion, is from a workflow standpoint. I mean, I can jump back into any case, any full mouth case that I've done that have gone out for a try-in or maybe something broke and now we're years later and I have a new master model. I can go right back into that same design scene from three years ago, and I can import a new master model, import new scan body scans on the same design. I'm not creating a new order. Wow. You know, I'm not having to set up a new order from scratch or do anything. So from a full arch workflow standpoint, the ability to import and export scans in a live scene, rearticulate your models to a new byte and realign it, you know, just really helpful features for the full arch workflow stuff. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. I can totally yeah. see where that would be a huge benefit. Do you have more designers than yourself or are you doing all of the designs? So I do all the designs. Uh, you know, we're a five person lab. So I've got a scanning station with just the basic ExoCAD on there that we don't even accept single units as a lab. So, hmm. but just for little things like the person that, that scans. That must be nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> But like, you know, the person that does our scanning will also, I hand off a case to her and she'll run it through Model Builder for me. So yeah. that's one ExoCAD station I have. And then I have my ExoCAD station with all the modules. But yeah, I outsource very little from for the design side. For me, it really comes down to workflows. It really does. Yeah. Well, you do all large cases, so it's got to. Yeah. You can send me your single units if you want to. <laughs> 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 So, Inja, are you seeing the same thing with your ability to have all the software at your disposal? Yeah, it makes our workflow a little bit complicated. Yeah, how do you decide which software to use when a case comes in? When a case comes in, well, majority of our cases are designed and finished on the Zircon system. Okay. So we yeah. have about six, seven Zircon mills. We have wow. probably wow. six Zircon scanners. We have three three shape systems and three or four exocad wow and then we actually have the pm7 ivoclar mills we started milling digital dentures uh, last year so we're actually doing really good over there nice um, yeah so you guys mentioned two things you know license fees for all of our machinery and equipment we pay about say fourteen thousand a year well license fee but also for support so mm -hmm. for everything that we're producing, it's really, you know, not a big deal. When we do purchase a new system, we kind of assume that annual license fee as part of the cost. So, you know, that's when the decision's made. We, you know, sure. we're going to assume that we're going to pay that every year. And if it's worth buying the system, we use Zircon for all of our big hybrid cases, full arches. And that's the whole purpose of buying the Zircon for our lab, you know. 10 years ago. So we've had, you know, quite a bit of experience under our belt and it works out great. One of our technicians have the ExoCAD system and the DOF scanner. So she uses her DOF to scan the big hybrid cases and then we usually design it in Zircon When it comes to custom abutments, we use Zircon But if we do any OEM titanium abutments that we're sending to say Nobel and Strauman and Vulcan mm -hmm. to mill, then it gets designed in the three shape and three shape has, I think the best integration 
mm-hmm. with other vendors and companies, especially it implant nice. companies. Yeah. yeah, so we kind of take advantage of that. Um, so we don't have to, you know, design it and then go on the Nobel website, log in and transfer, you know, none of that happens. But also the other thing, other kind of complexity it creates is say like, you know, Nobel has an update, it's not going. So a Nobel tech kind of comes in, messes around on our computer and then kind of disables something for strawman, right? <laughs> so yeah. then now our strawman yeah. <laughs> abutments aren't going. So I feel like sometimes, you know, that, it creates complexities and you know you have to go through your distributor yeah. and then you have to reach out to three shape but that's just kind of how business is right like if you're oh, yeah. integrating your you are introducing complexities so it's kind of expected from my perspective exocad does feel like a little more flexible system mm-hmm. exocad and Zircon you know where you can kind of stop and change direction you know it's not just what you originally said you were going to do and being able to pull in, you know, extra scans and files and meshing that definitely helps not only when you're originally designing, but afterwards when you're kind of troubleshooting, uh, especially for these big cases, you know, we try to do our due diligence, make sure every step is checked and done right. But, you know, sometimes things happen, you know, the bite's a little off or, you know, something happens or, you know, the verified model doesn't match. So, you can bring in different scans, you know, the old scans and the new scans, you can overlap it and see, okay, you know, is it a mistake we've did? Or is it a system glitch? Is it something the doctor did? So it helps us really troubleshoot after the fact and kind of do some quality control and training after the case is done and help us uh, in the future. So ExoCAD, you can do a, a case and do a crown. And if it doesn't fit, they send you a new model, you scan it and you can migrate those yeah. two and look at the differences yeah pretty much i mean you can bring in as That's many files cool. as you can and you just overlap them which is yeah really nice and then you can do all these different kinds of meshes right you can mesh model one to model two but also model two to model one you know so yeah. and that direction also helps you with the new the, the photogrammetry the pick system and the iCam system when the doctors you know start using those for full arches, you know, that can also help us get the accuracy yeah. better too. Wow. When you make a crown and it's the occlusion's too high and they take a new impression, send it, you can compare the two, send a screenshot to the doctor and say, well, this is why they're completely different. Yes, that helps us. I bet. <laughs> a lot. That's pretty a lot, fancy. A lot, yeah. <laughs> we take a lot of screenshots, a lot of photos for yeah. our doctor communication. You can't do that on three shape, can you, Savon? Um, he's thinking. To an he's ex- thinking. He's like, I can do. I can manipulate well, if it. If you're a wizard, <laughs> to an extent, it, it's not as I will. I will say yes. It's not as easy as ExoCAD. Yeah, uh, where you can just bring the file in and align it to that, and then okay, say use these coordinates. I mean, for me, I'd say yeah, I can do it. You give me a new master cast, I can take the old one merge the model and the, the design together, bring that over to the new data, align it. Now I have where the bridge was and then bring the bridge over into it and then not using the traditional workflow, but yes, we can bring it in, align it up and, you know, merge it to the tie bases or the abutments and whatever go. So yes, it is. But it, like Matt said, in ExoCAD, you know, in expert mode, you require a few more clicks in three shape, just in general, you just require more steps to get it there. So if somebody says, oh, I can do this, and I think about it, and, you know, the gerbil in my brain starts turning, goes, well, we can use this tool to bring this in and this way to do this, and we can still accomplish it. It might not be as intuitive or as easy in ExoCAD and Zircon Zon's way, but mm-hmm. to an extent, it can yeah. be done. And I think that's a good point to make too, is three shape on a production level is going to be less clicks to yeah. get your case start to finish. But like Savon was saying, if you have to troubleshoot or do anything other than clicking next in the design software, if there's any level of realigning scans or importing, exporting, uh, or any of that stuff involved, it's probably not going to be the best situation out of three shape. Mm-hmm. You've heard the horror stories. I mean, everyone has. Uh, oh, I have this case. I reopened it, and my design's all distorted. Yeah, yeah. It oh, happens. Yeah. My favorite example for the usability of ExoCAD from a workflow standpoint is: let's say we have a bridge two through five. Okay, so there's no posterior stop behind number two. 
So we scan in the byte, we're in the design and we're like, ooh, this is a, you know, a five unit bridge. I probably want to do a try-in before I go to final zirconia on this. 3D print mm -hmm. a, a quick try-in to equilibrate and take a byte registration so we can rescan in uh, the proper byte. Once we get that try-in back with the byte registration and we remount the case and rescan that new byte in, in the same design order, I can import the new byte, realign the scans or the opposing model for that matter. And then in the same design, all I have to do is adapt to occlusion. And if the bite was high, it's taken care of in the same design. So while you might have less clicks in three shape to go from start to finish in your design, you will have more clicks in three shape if you're doing anything out of the ordinary. Yeah. That is an Achilles heel, like new bites. Yeah. It can definitely be uh what do you basically puller. start over the case, right? You just yeah. rescan everything. No, what I would do is I, you know, I make a standard copy of it so I don't destroy the original just in case anything does go south. Yeah. And then I'll rescan the byte into that. And this is where the issue lies in previous versions is it wouldn't, with the design tree and the design intact, it wouldn't rewrite the materials XML or the some one of the files in that holds this the coordinates, it wouldn't rewrite that data over it unless you deleted the design tree. <laughs> so if you delete the design tree, everyone's like, okay, well now I lost my design. Well, it doesn't delete the actual design. Hmm. So now we would have to rename the folder for it to reuse the anatomy. And then now it would it would redo the byte to the right byte. And then when you go through, the design would pop up untouched all you would have to do is just connect the margins. You know, that, so for me, it's easy because I know the software. That was my biggest thing is like, everyone's like, oh, I want to go eat a steak at this restaurant. I'm like, okay, cool. I want to walk through the back door. I want to walk through the kitchen. I want to see how the steaks are being cooked. I want to see the ingredients they're using. I want to see the, the pans, the knives, you know, the oil that they're using. I want to see everything they're using. And then I go and I'll sit down and I'll eat the steak <laughs> because that way, you know, what you're expecting. I just want to make sure they're washing their hands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know, wash your hands before you go out to the front. But for me, <laughs> it was learn the software, what makes it tick to better understand how to utilize it instead of going in and saying, I got this. I don't know what I'm doing. Yeah. Help me. Hey, I was the same way, but my brain said, Hey, stop, go to the back and see how this thing works. See what makes the gears turn. And, you know, for me, yeah, I can do it that way. But for like how Matt said and, and Enjo said, it's so much easier to just, hey, bring this in and align it and then live and design, boop, it just changes. It's, it's total different architecture. And that's the difference between the two, mainly between ExoCAD and 3Shape is the architecture, the way it's built to design, the way it's tuned to run. 3Shape is dependent on certain resources of the computer, ExoCAD uses multiple processor graphics ram the more you throw at it the more you know it's like feeding fuel to the beast so it's completely different architecture you mentioned design trees which i think is worth touching on for talking about the architecture of these softwares yeah please yeah so like in three shape the design tree let's say you get so far into the software and you click save and you have to close out because you were going to lunch when you want to bring up that same project in your dental manager, you right click, you say design, and then you're clicking next all the way from the beginning of the project of your design project. You're clicking next, next, next through your margins, through your insertion direction, clicking next, 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 all the way till you get to where you were. And if you saved and closed out, let's say you were designing an all on four full arch case, let's say you had 300 sculpting moves. Oh now, God. Now three shape is loading. 300 sculpting moves and just to get you to, to where you were when you saved and closed out of your project. Mm -hmm. And that's the design tree concept. Yeah, It saves every little move that you do. And to go back into it, you have to re-execute every single one of those moves and get back to where you were. In ExoCAD, it's, it's a scene. You're saving a scene. So you could right click at any time in the design, click save, close out of your design and 
when you want to get back to where you were, it's kind of like when you're playing Mario Kart and you're going through checkpoints. Mario Kart will load at the at the last checkpoint that you went through. So at any point in ExoCAD, you can save a scene or a checkpoint. Sure. And when you open that checkpoint, you're exactly where you were in your design. There's no loading time. You don't have to click through anything. It's an exact scene saved. And it's a really useful tool. I bet. That makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. Because I've had designers that have been sitting next to me working on a full mouth case and something like that happens and they have to re go through everything again. And the time that it takes to do all of that and the frustration that I can see on their faces. And I never really knew that. So thank you for that explanation. Makes a lot of sense now. Yeah. That is one thing that ExoCAD definitely takes the cake over through shape is just that. Um, but you know, they were introduced in what, 19, I think, or 2020, the fast cache, you can enable it. And it actually, depending on your computer build, it will speed up the process, but it's still the same process. But what they've done is they've saved groups. So you get cache one, cache two, cache three, and it loads the cache files instead of loading each click through the design yeah. tree. Mm -hmm. So I definitely did notice that I built my own monster computer at home. And I've done a big case and I just slapped it together and I just did a whole bunch of clicks and I went to rebuild it. And on my computer at home, it definitely loads a lot faster than it was. But like Matt said, if you just wanted to go and just start right within minutes, you know, it's not at that point, but it is way better than I'm sure when Matt was using 3Shape back in the day. It definitely has changed. And the other thing I'll touch off on, it's in beta right now. We're, we're testing it. It's a great feature is now I think 3Shape is going to be up and on its heels of ExoCAD and doing the full arch bridges where everything's placed and the holes are placed where they go instead of, you know, connecting it to a specific tooth. It's just at the end, it's all combined and the hole goes through. So the design distortion problem is gone yes the wax up feature and that and that's what exocad had one up on three shape for the longest the longest time from the very get-go exocad was like that and i don't use exocad i think i've used exocad maybe once in my life but every time i'm at the shows you know i talk to larry and i say he says he's oh check this new feature out and you know i see it i'm like i just wow I'm not going to lie. I'm floored. Mm -hmm. Like there are certain things I like on the ExoVad uh, abutment module. It's like you can set your points and it'll contour to the tissue mm. right away. And that's a great thing. It does it way better than 3Shape. 3Shape, you kind of still have to move points and sculpt underneath if you really want it exactly. But it's pick and take. Um, I have an open mind. I keep an open mind. I'm not saying 3Shape is the best, but I think, you know, like Matt has got an open mind as well and sees the flaws in one and sees the pros in the other. Yeah. Um, and a lot of people, I guess some don't get past that point and they're just like, no, ExoCAD's the best. No, 3Shape's the best. You know, I'm like, dude, there is no best. True. You guys have both said several times that it takes less clicks to finish on the three shape. Why is that? <laughs> it's automated. <laughs> <laughs> I will agree that everything is right there. I do not have to click an icon or a drop down menu to scroll through another menu, to scroll through another menu, to scroll through another menu where I have to make a change on the margin line mm -hmm. offset. Everything is up front and okay. center. Like there's maybe something I may have to do, you know, click this little arrow to expand the scene mm -hmm. down, but maybe that's because my monitor resolution is too small and, and they, and they shrink it just because I can't fit everything on the screen. But on my 40 inch TV at home, everything's wide open and in front of you. So you click this and then you make the change. You click this in that aspect. It's, I guess gotcha. it's easier. So now I got to get all my technicians, 40 inch monitors. Come on, man. <laughs> at least 32 of us. 30, 32, 1080p, curve. nothing Make less. Curve. And they need two for every station. All right, <laughs> yeah, you have to have two. <laughs> well, then just save your money and buy the uh, Samsung Obsidian. I've seen that. Yeah. 49 inch widescreen. It's, you know, it's only about 1500 yeah, bucks. That's fine. You can fit about three monitors worth on there. <laughs> I just want to add. Yeah. The advantage we have is we see them like right next to each other, right? Yeah. Every day, both of our say technicians are working on both. 
And I see little shortcuts and little things that each system does. And I'm like, why isn't the other one does? And one of the little tiny thing in 3Shape is the plane cut feature for, you know, single units and your contacts. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm on mm -hmm. the Facebook group too. And I see Sevan's name, you know, all day, which is yeah. great. And I don't think uh, he even works. though. <laughs> I don't even though yeah I don't work on it I read all the replies and the questions it's very interesting to me and you know Matt Roberts one day was on there it's like yeah you don't have to just contact you just click you're done and I'm like oh my gosh so I came back to my Zirkinzon designer I'm like do you have this option and they're like no I'm like can you call maybe we don't know like maybe you know because there's so many options and features in a system that you know if you really don't dig deep and go into the kitchen really that you don't know about so I actually have them call Zorkanzan and you know find out 100% sure that they, no they don't have the plain cut mm. option but yeah overall we do like the ExoCAD better I think you know both systems work really great and you know they're doing their own thing and you know it's just kind of whatever your preference is or sometimes it's just pretty much whatever you started with you know yeah what you got comfortable with do you personally yeah. use both systems or just have them around you i do not i worked with serona for about seven years eight years um at my um, other old job i was a kind of technician then now i'm more of a manager gotcha. um you know so i'm actually buying the system and oh, saying, yeah. okay, how many new scanners do we need this year? Or do we need a scanner? You know, do we need to hire more people instead of buying more scanners or mills? You know, so those are kind of my jobs now. But, um, you know, I miss the jobs of sitting on the bench and just, you know, working away because you can tell at the end of the day how productive you were. You know, you scanned yeah. this many units or you milled this. Now, sometimes, you know, I work hard all day, every day. <laughs> Yeah. At the end of the day, I have hmm. nothing to show. Like I made <laughs> phone calls. I talked do. to doctors, you, <laughs> you know, and things like yeah. that. But it's nothing, you know, solid like, you know, w when you were a technician. So, but it's still a fun job. I, I like it. I enjoy it. It's It's been great. Do your technicians, do one technician specifically work on one system or do they bounce between them? It is harder to cross train because the, the whole experience actually the training comes from just sitting there every day and pounding out units you know yeah. so if you've been working on one system a week and then you jump over you're disoriented in a way yeah, so I maybe bet. you can do simple things but you can't just you know you're not as productive so from a business perspective it doesn't make sense the one thing that I guess the Zircon and the ExoCast system have over the three shape is the keyboard shortcuts. I don't know if three shape has it or not, but at least for my knowledge, they don't. You're just working strictly off your mouse. Zircon you know, you get control, click mm -hmm. and shift, click, and then it does different things, you know, add, subtract, smooth or whatever. So I think that actually adds to the productivity too. Mm -hmm. um, when you're working on circuits, well, that would help save on clicks. To Barb's previous mm -hmm. questions, you're not clicking; yeah. you're controlling, control, whatever. Yeah. If you hire a new employee, what system do you start them in? Zircon, because we okay. do have ten Zircon stations, so that's wow. our biggest. And three shape, we just kind of hired people who already had the experience because we didn't have the ability to train them in-house. Hmm. So, you know, we hired them. We already had the system. When we bought the system, obviously, we trained somebody, and that employee left us. So our three-shape system actually kind of just sat there for a little bit with no technician on it, and everything that comes through communicate, we just had to export it out. But now we have two technicians, and we're trying to train more because we're trying to do the digital dentures. And mm -hmm. Ivoclar, we use the Ivoclar. That's why we bought the Ivoclar PM7 milling machine so we can yeah. mill our dentures. And the design is, you know, partnership between 3Shape and Ivoclar. Mm -hmm. So we have mm -hmm. one technician trained in doing digital dentures on 3Shape uh, going on about a little over a year now. And he's doing great. But, you know, right now, digital and denture doesn't really talk to each other. So it's very, very hard. <laughs> to even like I don't think there one exists you know digital denture technician so you just have to kind of make a decision of okay do I take my CAD CAM technician and 
trained him in dentures or vice versa. Yeah. So uh, he's been working with our denture manager to, you know, kind of improve on the, you know, flanges where the, you know, the ridges where to place the teeth and all the basic removable education. And um, so far it's, it's working out great. Interesting. I have a question for all three of you. Are you seeing an increase in doctors scanning and sending files in versus impressions? For us, yes, it is. It's every day, you know, we're increasing digital, but it's not kind of the same storm that took the laboratory business when it's going to digital. It seems like more slower, steadier, Mm -hmm. one here, one there Mm -hmm. uh, type of transition. And the other thing, at least I kind of personally struggle with, you know, the scanning is they say, oh, here's a scan and make me a flipper, right? (laughs) So you have to make a model, you have to print that model, you have to give it to your denture department, they have to duplicate it in stone, and then they have to do the hydrocolloid, duplicate that again to the flipper. Right back to analog, yeah. 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 And we still charge a flipper a flipper price, you know, and just because it's digital, we're not going to charge more, so... I guess from a business perspective, that's, you know, another kind of cost that is added. But, you know, it's okay because, you know, at, right now we're learning from it. So that's yeah. kind of where I'm calculating the cost. But the other thing is, you know, last year we had COVID. We didn't have any conventions, um, things like that. And the year before that, I was actually pregnant. and had a baby and I couldn't attend lab day and all the other things that I like to go to. So my reference point is about two years ago. At that point, none of the intraoral scanners were good at scanning soft tissue. Mm -hmm. So now we have all this technology on our end, on the on the laboratory end, that we can do digital dentures and digital flippers and mill them and print them. But I still don't know if the data we're receiving is, you know, is good quality. You know, if those have improved. And I talk to my, you know, Itero sales rep, three shape sales rep, and all the other scanners too. But they don't really have a solid information yet. I think it is improving little by little. But until, you know, we can get confirmation that, okay, yeah, you know, you can scan soft tissue, no problem. And, you know, the the model you printed is accurate. You know, we can't 100% rely on it. Right. Yeah. Agree. I agree. All the intraoral people say, you can. <laughs> <laughs> can you scan soft tissue? Well, you can, uh, but they never say yes. <laughs> yeah. I would say for a lab doing mostly full arch stuff, a lot of it really depends on the doctor. You know, we can receive scans from just about any scanner. Most most scanners will at least let you send an STL file, even if the lab doesn't have that specific portal. So while we do receive scans, it's usually for like wax ups or temporaries and stuff like that when you're doing a lot of full arch implant cases there's things like pic scanner photogrammetry technology Mm -hmm. is all new and we've dabbled in it a little bit but the doctors i'm finding are actually pushing back and saying like "Uh, you know i'm more comfortable doing it the way i've always done it and to convince them to buy you know like a pic scanner it can be daunting you know it's it's not even an interoral scanner it's a totally new technology so yeah. On the full arch side, it's a hard question to answer. On our crown and bridge cases, we have no problem with intraoral scans. That's also depending on the doctor's techniques. It's all about isolating the margin, you know? So it's just the doctor's preferences in my experience. And most prosthodontists prefer analog in my experience, especially for crown and bridge cases. So we accept a lot of scans and ExoCAD does a great job with just about any of the scans, but for full arch, it's kind of a different animal, in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree. Out of our entire business, I think, I don't know, I said 5% last time I was online. I think maybe I got like maybe 10% of my my clientele is sending digital scans. Yeah, I would say about the same. Interesting. You know, each lab is going to be different. I know my friend in Sweden is set to be 100% digital in the coming months or so, but I don't want to talk bad about our clients but the skill set is just not there i get scans where i'm scratching my head going oh my gosh why (laughs) didn't you see this didn't you see there was like blood you didn't see the margin i mean it's one of those just like i've just learned to just say hey i do it if it comes back Mm. for a redo i charge them again but 
it's a tool where if they take it the right way, they're going to see themselves and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, <laughs> yeah. that's that's my prep. I thought my preps were yep. good. All my crowns were dropping in analog. And well, they probably were because the lab was fixing them for you, you know, but it's not a magic wand. I think out of all my clients that have it gone digital two have actually used the tool to better improve yeah. Yeah. their skills. It's and like have taking their eyes a open. conventional impression. It's the same thing. I mean, you have to have a technique. You have to, yeah. you have to make sure all the margins are totally visible. You have to make sure there's no saliva and blood. And, you know, I think a lot of doctors get the scanner in their hand and, you know, they think the scanner is going to do all the work and that's just not true. You know, it's a yeah. magic wand, Matt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's the magic wand. Try out a nickel. I, mean. <laughs> I think it's very doctor dependent. And, you know, if it's a doctor who has educated themselves on using scanners, it, it's usually a great relationship. Yeah. But the doctors that aren't good at taking the scans are also the doctors that can't wrap their head around the fact that it's their financial responsibility if it doesn't fit in the mouth. Exactly. I've said it and I'll say it again. I'm not going to say the uh, the S word, but you guys know what it is. Basically, a crappy analog doctor is an equally crappy yeah. digital doctor. Absolutely. Like that plain and simple. If they're not, if they didn't change by looking at their impressions and viewing that, oh, why is there an impression material missing at the margin in these five areas? Let me just take another one, and it's still the same. There's a problem. If they choose not to fix it, they're going to do the exact same in digital dentistry. Yep. It's frustrating. Or there will be a margin off in the mouth, and they'll say, why didn't you catch that in the scan while you were designing? It's like, well, why, why didn't you catch it in your scan software before you <laughs> press the send button, you know? <laughs> or why didn't you clean up the prep before you yeah. scanned yeah. it, you know? <laughs> I've had three or four crowns done in my mouth by uh, one of our docs, and – He'll scan, he'll do a quick pre-scan, and then he'll look at the margin and he'll go, okay, we need to clean this up. And he'll go back and he'll delete the area, clean it up. And then he'll do the final scan and it's set and done. Uh, yeah, it took a little bit more time, but I actually appreciate the fact that he does this on every single one of his patients. And it wasn't just me. I was going to say, did you reach back. over and point to the screen and be like, hey, man, can we clean this up a little bit? <laughs> no, I just sat there and let them do their job. I don't like telling, especially people that are supposed to be at a higher education level than I am. Hmm. Because you went to school and you learned about all this body and function and everything else. I've had a lot of bite backs where they go, what do you know? I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just sit there and, okay, I'm not going to say anything. And then when... The problem occurs and it, it causes a headache down the, well, why this happened? Like I was going to tell you, but told me not to yeah. tell you. So this is the reason. Okay. Well, how do we fix it? I'm like, and yeah. now you want my help. So yeah. And I, I do see the, like Matt saying the whole pick system push that my clientele. It's like, I just spent $35,000 on a scanner. I heard digital is going to oh, be cheaper. Yeah. 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 My classic comeback is, is doc. I have over half a million dollars invested on equipment to mill your $89 yeah. crown. Yeah. Boom. Bingo. Mic drop. I says, you spent $35,000 on an intraoral scanner. Yeah. I spent $35,000 on a desktop scanner. And then I spent, you know, another forty-five dollars on a mill. And I've spent, God, I don't know how many on And my suction, yearly fees for crying you know? out loud. <laughs> and my burrs and this and that. And you're complaining about your $35,000? Yeah. It like, happens. <laughs> I get it. I mean, and to touch off real quick where you can't charge more for digital. Yeah. We you know we, we take the cake on the models. Like we don't charge and you know, we got the carbon and you know, that's not a pretty site, but as far as financially goes, because there's no ROI, there's zero ROI. I mean, unless you're doing a ton of splints and a lot of other stuff where it's actually contributing, but for models, it's just, yeah, it's not worth it. It's a zero win. But, you know, for my digital cases, my implant cases, I actually charge a digital analog fee. And then I put on the invoice, please return the analog to get a credit. And I think it's worked out pretty good. But those that don't, they don't get a credit. I've quickly found out that I'm paying $35, $40 for these analogs and I'm not getting yeah. them back. As we're on analog cases, we actually charge for the analog. So why can't I? Oh, we do. Yeah. yeah, we do. And I do. And I give it back. And then I get about, 
I don't know, 70% of the models back. Interesting. So the other 30% are paying for the analogs and stuff. So Those are the offices that throw away the models the minute they seed it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. If we just tell them, hey, titanium is going to be the new gold, I think yeah. that'll quickly change course. <laughs> They'll have a collection of it. Well, one thing that digital help us is the doctor communication, you know, like calling on the phone and say, hey, your margins don't look good means one thing versus when you see an email where, you know, it's just blood and no line, no nothing. So that's kind of what we do. We just really, really document it well, take, you know, 10 photos of the same margin and we just send it to the doctor. And it's a good way for the doctor to take yeah. responsibility for the case. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now the ball is mm -hmm. in their court, you know. Now if they say go ahead, you know, yeah, we'll we'll fudge it. We'll, we'll go ahead. But at that point, you know, we have written confirmation. <laughs> Full charge remake. That's one yeah. thing I do love that ExoCAD does from a communication standpoint. They have WebView HTML file. So as opposed to taking screenshots, emailing them and whatever time involved in getting those screenshots prepared and cropped and blah, blah, blah. ExoCAD produces a HTML file that can be opened in Google Chrome from any computer, and it's a 3D review. Oh, they can rotate it and everything? They can rotate it. It's full function, drop in, drop out. I give it to ExoCAD. That is, That's yeah, great. and if I imported a photo, a patient photo into the design software, and aligns the 2D photo to the 3D scans to do, you know, a cosmetic design. I can save that scene with the 2D photo in reference to the 3D scan, save it all as web view file, an HTML file in ExoCAD, and doctors can 3D review their cases. Nice. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. So. 3Shape is just through communicate where it's 2D files. Yeah. Well, I usually just lean over the technician with my cell phone, take a picture of their monitor, and text it to the top. <laughs> <laughs> it's real high tech here. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. So you just send them the link, Matt? Yeah, so we just email them the WebView link, very similar to just attaching a photo to an email. And it opens right up with Chrome. They can, in ExoCAD, well, same thing in 3Shape, how you can turn scans off and on in the top right. corner. They have that same option in the design software, so they can toggle on the pre-op or the or the study model to see in reference to that what your design looks like in reference to yep. the 2D photo, and it's just it's all very communicative. It's pretty it's pretty amazing. My bars get uh, outsourced, and I get them back in you know the web view, and I I look at them, and and every single From time I'm blown away. I've played with 3D yeah. PDFs like personally here at home, and I'm trying to do it, but I looked at these softwares and they're like four or $5,000 just to get a 3D PDF yeah. software. I found one that was free and it kind of worked, but it's not something that you're going to want to use. I kind of talk with it through my buddies on, you know, in Messenger and whatnot. And it's something that me, Mark Dixon, Min, and a lot of bigger end users are saying, guys, why don't we have something mm -hmm. like this? Why don't we? And they're, they're just like, you can use communicate. I'm like, but it's not 3D. Like... This is a link. You can text it to them. Literally, on my phone, I previewed cool. a bar yeah. while I'm at home or I'm, you know, in the car and I'm looking, I'm like, I just reply, I'm like, go for it. It's good. Like, that's the beauty of Exo's WebView. It's truly an amazing yeah. feature uh, for communication. I mean, you can use live Zoom calls and the doctor can remote in and you can, you know, sit and that's a one-on-one. -on -one. That's it, taking it to the next notch, you know, like a premium service, but this is just great for general, which is going to be a big thing. You could send out the doc, be like, this is amazing. Okay, it looks good. Or Matt, change this. I think three shape communicate might be an oxymoron. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it, it is. It, it, it doesn't communicate. It communicates. One day you get cases, one day you don't. <laughs> you know, it's, hey man, it's technology. It's, I guess it's human as it's set yeah. up to could be. Could you imagine having every crown that you do be sent to a doctor to view an okay before you oh. proceed? Oh my God. I mean, it would delay and you'd be behind because you'd be waiting for a response. Well, that's when you put a four week turnaround. Yeah, but just to have <laughs> that, hey, you okayed it. We're good to go. It's like surgical guides. You can't do them until they okay them. Yep. And now it's all you. Yep. Yeah. Well, you know, you can also look at it this way like Matt specializes in these higher end cases. I mean, he does beautiful work, hands down. I mean, I'm amazed. Thank I see it and I'm just like, that's beautiful. And in his case, he can say, hey, this is the way we work. 
we want a full write off on yeah. these cases. And he does it. And I know certain people that will only do cases a certain way. And a doctor comes in as well. I do it this way. He's like, no, nope, I've tried that. I don't like it. This is the way I do it. And Hey, this is my business standpoint. So you could literally say it. And, you know, I don't know how many Matt does a month, but if it's worth it, you know, it, it, that person can say, Hey, I want a full checkoff, just like a yeah. surgical guide that this is, this is good. We do design reviews pretty religiously here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. every case is usually anterior. It's usually six or more units. And sure. even for a wax up, it's, it's just a design. It's not like we're putting tons of texture or character into it, but just for the doctor to say like midline's good and size ledge position's good. Yeah. And I like the tooth proportion. You know, if I yep. can get that much approved, these cases are pretty much slam dunk. The rest is easy. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, I got a doctor who comes by and, and checks off on the diagnostic and then on the design, he'll come by and he'll spend 10 minutes with my designer and he goes, yep, looks good. And then the rest is, you know, the fine anatomy, facial anatomy on the anteriors and whatnot, the texture that all comes with the hand at the end. And all of his cases have dropped in. Like he's, he, we've actually generated more anterior business with this. And this is not, he's going out of his way. He's passing by and it's all coordinated that way. So it's not like he stops, comes out and looks at it and goes back. So it's all done on his yeah. behalf. So it's better for him. That's some great stuff. You know, that goes into a business standpoint over ExoCAD and 3Shape is, does better and whatnot. But the, the web view is, I will say it again, just it's an amazing tool. I think we answered the question, which one's better? The answer is depends. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> depends. We easily hit an hour here, everybody. That was fascinating. Yeah. I thought that was yeah. really cool. It was awesome. I thought we covered that a was. lot of ground. Yeah. I learned something new. <laughs> yeah, I would love to maybe revisit you guys in a couple of months, cover a few more areas of this, because I don't think we even scratched the surface. Yeah, I'd be happy to. Yeah, there's a lot more topics. No. There's a How lot about more. errors, Savon? Uh, software errors. <laughs> That's the whole uh, segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's where ExoCAD does Our three shape less. never freezes up. You kidding? What? No. But, I mean, I will say I am floored. 2020 was a solid release. Obviously, 2021 is in beta. I have it right now. I just got it, what, we got it last week. And there's some big improvements on the denture, the module, the, the full arch module integration, the, the the way it functions. There are good things coming, but, you know, I think the way 3Shape does it is it's only just done as like the big things are, are more tackled first and the little add-ons and stuff like that are done in a few years from now. It's getting better. I think a lot of people will definitely be floored on when 2021 is released and the what's news come out soon but yeah there's a lot of errors i mean but you know there's errors that happen because users just try to do something fast and it's and it doesn't work that way there's certain things that you got to do and some of it's hardware related but yeah errors can be a sore subject <laughs> we'll save it for another episode so yeah well, thank you yeah. savan matt inja thank you so much for joining us today Thank, Thank you, Elvis. Thank you, Elvis, appreciate for having it. me. Yeah, we appreciate all of you. Thank you, Elvis and Barbara. Yeah, we'll talk to you guys soon. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Bye. Whitmix's new Vera Wash Resin Cleaning Station is the ideal piece of equipment to use in the 3D printed resin post process. Its oscillating multi speed stirrer produces a tornado like vortex every 30 seconds and guarantees efficient, effective, and powerful cleaning whether the units are individual or still attached to the build plate. The two alcohol baths make an effective step wash system. It cleans more efficiently and there's less alcohol needed since it is reused for both a fresh bath and a dirty bath. The VeraWash's intelligent design offers features such as mode, time, and a start-stop button display which gives the operator full and automatic control of the cleaning process. A mesh basket used in the wash container makes it easy to keep track of all small printed parts when cleaning. The affordable unit's one-year warranty ensures peace of mind for the owner. So visit them at whipmix.com or call 1-800-626-1111.
1-800-242-5651 for more information about this great new product. And as always, we appreciate your support of the podcast, Whitmix. A big thanks to Savan, Matt, and Enja for coming on our podcast to share your experiences with the different software. So let's be honest. No matter what software you use, it's the technician that makes the case work, not the computer. So maybe you learned something about the other software that you didn't know, and maybe you want to switch now, or maybe you realize you have the better one of the group. That is what our roundtable discussions are all about. We want to do more of them, but we need you guys' help. So if you have a good topic that would make for an interesting discussion, and you know at least two more people that would have great input, Send us an email at info at voicesfromthebench.com and let's get another round table started. Awesome. Well, that's all we got for you guys. We appreciate it. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Did I say it wrong? Yeah. No. Okay, I'll use yours. <laughs>